Hey there, YouTubers. Um, gonna do one of those videos that I really don't like to do, where I'm actually on camera doing a ramble and stuff like that. But every now and then you do it to show that you're a human being. And I'm gonna mention one topic, and I'm gonna do all I can to only mention it once, because although it's really important, um, hopefully people are coming here for a break from that, getting away from mindless drivel that's out there, and to mindless drivel that I'll be sharing. Um, but coronavirus. Please stay safe, follow the directions of professionals, um, do what they say, and hopefully this will all be behind us soon. So moving on to the topic of today's conversation, which I probably already put in the title, is the good things about a Class B RV. Now, there are many different kinds of Class Bs, and I'm going to use mine as the example because it's what I know. So mine's a 99 Leisure Travel. If you've followed along before, you already know that. If you haven't, well, that's what it is. <laughs> um, there are many different kinds. There are many different age groups. You know, the the mid to late 90s are all pretty similar. Um, I'm biased again that I think I have a pretty special one. The storage is fantastic and all that good stuff. But I'm going to base my conversation on Class Bs that are about this age group. There's a lot of people that do... I consider what other people do when they say van life. I think of a Class B different than van life. And it's all semantics, however anybody describes it. But I think of a Class B as just a really small RV on a van chassis that has all the things that a regular RV has, where my mind tells me when I think of vans, I think more of the cool conversions that people do. And uh, there's a lot of really cool conversions out there where you can you can have good stuff, but I'm, I'm kind of basing on my stuff. And then you have the new Class Bs. Like if I won the lottery, I would probably buy um, a Leisure Travel Unity with the Murphy bed and all that stuff. But being honest, I think technically they have to call them Class Cs, but it, we all like to call that new style a Class B, but they're huge and they're really expensive. So I think of Class Bs as something in the mid to late 90s and early 2000s that you can still find for a good deal. So anyways, let's get in. I see my rambles take far too long. Um, let's get into what I'm talking about as the advantages of. Number one and first is miles per gallon. When I was looking for an RV, I chose a Class B because of MPGs. <laughs> um, I can get 15 miles a gallon pretty regularly. Usually the worst conditions, I'll get about 13, but usually I can get about 15. And when I go on my next trip, I want to try to do a different kind of observation of how good my Class B is. I want to do an actual cost per mile. So because a lot of people say, oh, buy a new diesel, they get 22 miles a gallon. Well, first, if you did a real cost per mile, you would also put in the cost of that vehicle you're driving. Eddie's paid off. If I go out and buy a $150,000 Class B, my cost per mile is going to be pretty high. So, but a cost per mile would be the way I would think of it in in the most useful terms is um, how much money did you put in the gas tank divided by how many miles you drove. And that will give you an accurate idea of how much it cost you to go that far. So saying my um, gas engine gets 15 miles to the gallon where a diesel engine might get 22, but I had to pay in most places 70 to 80 cents more per gallon. So I think there's a lot to be said for gas. Now, overall, Class Bs are going to get the best miles per gallon of all the RVs because they're smaller and they're sleeker. Um, moving on to the next thing is they're easy to drive. It's not a 40-foot diesel pusher, you know? It's not a huge vehicle. Um, most Class Bs, like, again, the group I'm talking about, they fit in a regular car spot. If you've ever driven a big SUV like a Suburban or what's the big Ford is the Expedition, it's it's a little bit bigger than driving one of those, so it's not hard. The only thing I will say is 
because they're about 20 feet long, side wind, cross wind can pull you around a little bit. But other than that, they're, they're pretty easy to drive. So that's a definite benefit because we all get out there on the road and we see lots of people driving stuff they shouldn't be driving, you know. There are people out there driving 40-foot diesel pushers, towing a car, and you look at them and you're like, oh, that's not a good idea. So that's why these are also popular, because they're easy to drive. And when things become popular, the price becomes what they want to charge. The ease to drive goes along with you can fit anywhere. Like I said, any parking spot. But a thing that a lot of people don't realize is there are older state and national parks that are really hard to get these big honking RVs that everybody wants now, or that a lot of people want. There's still some of us out there that like the simplicity with still having all the amenities like I talked before. So having a smaller Class B like this, you are not limited to where you can go. Now, not limited in space-wise, sometimes ground clearance, but that's a whole different issue. But um, you can you can get a Class B anywhere. It's pretty simple. <laughs> and you're not towing something. So um, the ease of getting anywhere is good too. I used to own a pretty big boat. And I've learned that the funniest places to spend an afternoon are boat ramps and RV campgrounds. Because there's a lot of people with trailers that really have a hard time doing what they're doing. It's, it can be pretty funny. But in a Class B, you don't have that problem definite bonus. Next, we're going to talk about price. Now, this is a tough one because I got this one about seven years ago. Yeah, seven years ago now. And I got it for 15 grand. And being honest, I could probably sell it for more than that now because the new ones have gotten so crazy that these older models have hold, hold their value and have actually appreciated as opposed to depreciated in a lot of areas. So so good deals are out there, but they can be tough to find. But I still think price-wise, you can get a good deal on it. Um, being 100% honest, if you buy an older Class C, you'll probably get a better price on it. But they're just not built as well. And you're not going to get the gas mileage. So there's that. Um, speaking of that, one of the other really good factors of these is they are very well insulated. I have camped in this in 20 below and stayed fine with a little electric space heater. I've camped in this in 110, I think is the highest I've been with the AC going. And this does pretty well. And that insulation goes to build quality. And I just think if you're looking at most RVs you're going to buy out there, the build quality on Class Bs are pretty darn good. And, and that that build quality and insulation and all that really does does matter. That's why they, they tend to last pretty long. Another great factor of Class Bs is um, under the hood or vehicle mechanical maintenance. Um, most any, like this is a Dodge, any Dodge dealership can do it. Most backyard mechanics or small garages, if you're out there in the middle of nowhere, they can help you. Um, I have a problem I need to get fixed and I, I called an RV place and they charge $154 an hour for maintenance. And most garages are about half that, maybe to a hundred, but, but definitely cheaper. So the ease of maintenance and the ease of parts when you're traveling on something like a smaller class B, just to keep you moving is a good thing. If you have a breakdown with one of these, your repair time is probably going to be quicker and easier to accomplish than if you're in a great big RV. You don't need as much specialty work. Next, I've been in a lot of different RVs from in showrooms to people I know that have different travel trailers, fifth wheels, you know, big class A's. Um, I just think these are much better designed because when you build something small like this, you have to put a lot of thought into it and you have to make it efficient and a good use of space. And I just think that causes a good build quality and that causes a good design. I often look at, I look at class B's like the people that make these are also people that use them where you get into some bigger 
honking RVs. It looks like they just want to put tile on everything and make things fancy, but they don't design them as if they're using them. So um, I just really like the design of Class Bs. Um, I think they do a better job. Now, again, all these things, when you say something is good, that doesn't mean everything else is terrible. It's, and it's a personal opinion. What the hell do I know? <laughs> Never claim to know anything because it just sets you up to look stupid when you don't. Put comments below. To go along with well design is the fact that a Class B, like from the factory, not something you made on your own, which is still cool. Um, I have everything that a real RV has. I have a shower, I have a bathroom, I have a kitchen. You know, I have a refrigerator, I have air conditioning unit, I have vans, I have everything that they have, but again, it's smaller. So it gives you the ability to camp how you want to camp, I think. So a lot of people forget that they just think they're just small and I couldn't handle that small space, which first, small is great if you can handle the small space. If you can't, don't buy a Class B. Just don't do it. I have found Class Bs to be, well, I mainly have my Class B, but I've seen a lot of others and looked at other people's, but I've found it to be really flexible. Um, I've shown a lot of videos and I don't want to rehash a lot of things I've shown, but mine is set up. I have a queen bed in here and I can take the queen bed out. I can put two twins along the sides. Um, I have tables I can put anywhere. The flexibility of a Class B is that they're small enough that if it's really cold outside, you can run your dash. You know, you turn on the engine and run your dash heat, and you can get by. You can use that to get by. Same when it's really hot. Well, not really hot when it's hot. <laughs> you can run the dash air, and it can help you a little bit. You get a big RV, and that's just not an option. That's It's just too big. It can't handle that amount of space. But in the smaller space, it can work. And with having doors, you can even run the engine and close parts off and stay in the cooler section or the warmer section or whatever. There's just a lot of flexibility to a Class B. And that's one thing I like about it. And last but not least, because none of these were in an order and I don't think I numbered them or anything. I just started talking. I did make a list. I tried to think before I got on here. It might not seem like it because I'm just going off on tangents, but I did try to make a list. And the last but not least is if you're a person that goes to campgrounds and sits in your RV, don't buy a class. You want to get in an RV, go to a campground, sit inside, go out for walks a little bit, but spend a lot of time inside, please don't buy a class B. You're not going to be happy. This is not what they're made for. They're made for what I think is the best part of them is it's a room with a view. I can park this thing and look out the window to lakes and mountains and wonderful things. And then I don't have enough space in here that I want to be in here all day. So they force you to go outside. And to me, that's why you're doing all this. Like I said, I have everything that real RVs have. I have an awning out there. I could sit chairs out there and sit all day and watch people walk by campground. I hate that. I never do that. I've said before, there's been people I've met at campgrounds that ask me if I have a chair. That's how, that's how rarely I ever take my folding chair outside. Because for me, this is a vehicle that gets me and sadly the cats. I'll, I'll throw some pictures of the cats at the end for the people that like the cats. But it gets me from where I am to where I want to be. Gives me a place to sleep that if it rains, I'm not going to get wet. If it's too cold, I can turn the heat on. If it's too hot, I can turn the air conditioner on. Whether I'm in here or not, because I have animals. Um, so in many ways, it's like, it's like a nice tent. <laughs> It's nothing like a nice tent, but you get what I'm saying. It's just, I don't feel the need for all that big fancy stuff. I bought this because I want to be outside. Um, I don't think there's any other type of RV I would want. From time to time, I think about a small trailer, like an A-frame pop-up, that that could be cool. Um, I think a truck campers, 
Um, you can find good deals on old ones of those, but trucks, you know, especially if you want to go buy a brand new truck, my goodness, <laughs> yikes. So um, everything has pluses and minuses, but for me, I think those are some of the best parts about what a Class B is all about. It's a great way to go. And, and everybody's always asking where you find these. You have to get on the internet. You have to do everything. You have to do a lot of searching. You have to find what you like. And then when you see one, if you're serious, you have to buy it. <laughs> if it's perfect, fantastic. If there's some things you got to do, great. But if you're looking for a 90s, early 2000s, um, which again, I like better than the new ones. Now, I, would, I wouldn't say I wouldn't buy a 2020 Leisure Travel Unity with all that cool stuff, but um, I wouldn't spend that kind of money. It would have to be a big lottery ticket. Even though I think they're fantastic, they're big. <laughs> I like what they did in the 90s and the early 2000s. I like these I like these better than the Sprinter ones. No offense again. But um, if you're thinking of a Class B, there's some of the things that I think that make them a really good option. But always search, look, check everything out. If you find the right one, you'll have a great and wonderful day. If you find the wrong one, it will become driveway art and you'll be unhappy. And then you'll sell it and you would have lost a lot of money. And you'll say, RVing is stupid and it sucks. And that will be because you didn't buy the RV that works for you. That's the most important part of all this stuff. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, and I hope you stay safe. And you have a great and wonderful day. GoPro, stop recording. Piggy's been getting too much screen time, but the cats are doing fine. Living a lazy life of snoring. Tell the people you're doing fine. Yeah, I know. Yep, you're doing fine. Laying there right next to my laptop while I'm working on the video I just shot. And over there, Keekers, tell the people you're doing fine too. Both of you guys are wondering why I don't go out as much as I used to. Why are you here all the time? And you're wondering why I haven't been drugged back into the RV. She doesn't mind the RV as much. She likes driving. Vinny, you don't like driving, do you? Huh? Not so much? You like once we get someplace and it stops moving, but you don't mind, you don't really like the driving. He's too busy looking out the window because she likes looking out windows. Right? When we're driving, you like watching the, out the window. So YouTube, these guys are still having a good time. They're fine. Yeah, I know. Right? You're good? Can I edit the video now? I already did an ending, but I'll tell them now. Have a great and wonderful day, okay? YouTubers, have a great and wonderful day. Cats are fine enough. Right? You're good? One of these days, right, Vin? We'll get a trip. Stay safe out there.